Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about growth hormone. Um, so first we'll talk about where, what is growth hormone, where is it produced? And we'll talk a little bit about how to produce more of it um, and why sometimes growth hormone gets low. Um, so growth hormone is the most abundant anterior pituitary hormone. So we have our little pituitary gland, the master endocrine gland here, uh, down here kind of hanging off of the hypothalamus at the front of the brain. Um, and so it secretes lots of hormones, growth hormone being one of them. Um, so growth hormone promotes synthesis and secretion of insulin like growth factors, which I'll talk about on the next slide. Um, so really all of the effects of growth hormone are via the effects of insulin like growth factors, uh, because growth hormone stimulates secretion of those. Um, growth hormone is produced in bursts every few hours and mostly during sleep. So we especially secrete it during sleep a little bit sometimes in other parts of the day, but the large majority is during sleep hours. And we'll talk more about that. Uh, so insulin like growth factors are secreted throughout the body by lots of different tissues. So liver, skeletal muscle, cartilage, bone, um, and even other tissues. So um, Insulin-like growth factors are what are actually stimulating growth, and so growth hormone stimulates secretion of insulin-like growth factors, and IGFs are what are actually causing the growth to occur. So they're named that way, insulin-like, because they have some actions that are similar to insulin. So in some ways, it's actually opposite of insulin, and in some ways, it's exactly the same. Uh, so insulin... Um, part of what it does is it tells cells to take up glucose from the blood and in that way it helps cells to grow and repair and develop. Um, so insulin like growth factors has a similar effect that it stimulates growth and repair and synthesis of new tissues. Um, but it's entirely different when it comes to um, blood sugar and, and how it's related to blood sugar. It's very different from insulin in that regard. Uh, so insulin-like growth factors stimulate protein synthesis, help maintain muscle and bone mass, promote healing and tissue repair, and enhances breakdown of triglycerides and liver glycogen. Um, so we actually will secrete more IGFs, uh, growth hormone, which stimulates IGFs when our blood sugar is low, which is opposite of when we secrete insulin. All right, so factors that impair secretion. So if somebody has low growth hormone, um, this is could be something on this list that is interfering with growth hormone secretion. Um, so it has been found that excessive abdominal fat does interfere with uh, growth hormone secretion. Um, now, some studies, it's not really clear the, the causative relationship. Um, so it is clear that people with higher body mass um, and especially higher amount of abdominal fat that they do secrete less growth hormone. And the question is, which came first? You know, was it that they increased in fat because of low growth hormone or the other way around? Um, that can be hard to demonstrate, but there are some studies that have demonstrated the causative effect um, where when they lose abdominal fat, regardless of growth hormone status, that growth hormone production does increase after they've lost the weight. Um, so there is a clear relationship there and especially abdominal fat, not just whole body fat. Um, insulin secretion also interferes with growth hormone secretion. Um, again, they have kind of opposite effects. So growth hormone is secreted more in times of low blood sugar, um, and like a fasting state. Um, and so if we have insulin spikes, like in response to increased blood sugar, then that is the opposite of what causes, uh, growth hormone secretion. And so the two are, are kind of acting in opposite, um, because most of our growth hormone is secreted while we're sleeping, poor sleep or not enough sleep definitely interferes with growth hormone secretion. Uh, so more sleep, better sleep is going to help a lot. Um, there's also a very significant decrease in growth hormone secretion with age. So there's a natural decline. Um, so after age 20 to 30 or so, there's a decline of about 15% per decade. Um, so there's the most growth hormone secretion during puberty, 
Um, and then a little bit of a gradual decline in the 20s. And then by age 30 or so, there's a, an additional decline by 15% per decade until uh, we're secreting very little of it in older age. Um, and that is a main component in some of the things, some of the body changes that we see in the process of aging, like lower lean body mass, increase in body fat, uh, difficulty um, with building new muscle, building new bone mass, those sorts of things that we see as a normal part of the aging process. A lot of that is due to decrease in growth hormone. Uh, but that's a natural, normal decrease. Uh, but on the next slide, we'll talk about things that we can do to increase our, our production. Um, and then, of course, there are things like genetic abnormalities, like certain conditions that interfere with growth hormone production, or things like tumor injury or, or other types of damage to the hypothalamus or pituitary gland. All right, so things we can do to stimulate growth hormone. So growth hormone is stimulated by sleep, stress, exercise, and low blood glucose. Um, so majority of our growth hormone is secreted while we're sleeping. So we get a big pulse of it a little bit before midnight and then smaller pulses earlier in the morning. Um, so somebody who's, who stays up really light, bleh, somebody who stays up really late and is often up past midnight, they might be missing that large pulse that happens before midnight um, in most people. It can be a little bit different, the timing of it, depending on individuals and your individual circadian rhythm. Um, but for most of us, we get our largest dose of growth hormone in the entire 24 hour cycle happening right before midnight if we are sleeping. Uh, and then littler pulses in the morning. Um, intermittent fasting has been shown to stimulate growth hormone. Uh, the longer the period of fasting, the greater percentage increase you see of growth hormone. Um, so it isn't clear how much growth hormone is increased if you do shorter fasts, like uh, 12 to 16 hour fast, that's not clear. Um, but uh, if you fast the whole day or longer than that, you can have serious like 100% to 300% increases in growth hormone production. Um, you still will see a, a more modest increase in growth hormone for shorter fasts. Um, so it's like the longer you fast, the more increase you have, the shorter fast, less increase. Um, but make sure that you're doing what is healthy and safe for you. Not everyone can fast for, for such a long period of time and it may not be worth it just for the growth hormone increase. Uh, depending on you and what is right for you and what your activity level is like and so on. Um, keeping sugar low, keeping blood sugar low will stimulate growth hormone because again, insulin and growth hormone are secreted in opposite conditions. Okay. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, a lot of carbohydrates, that's going to keep insulin elevated, which is going to suppress secretion of growth hormone. So following a low sugar and maybe even a low carbohydrate diet, uh, that's going to help keep insulin low. Um, and that's also going to help reduce abdominal fat, which we know interferes with growth hormone production. Um, so keeping sugar low is going to help stimulate growth hormone. Um, similarly, we want to avoid eating too close to bedtime because when we eat anything, carbohydrate or otherwise, we're going to produce some insulin. Uh, we produce the most insulin from carbohydrates, less insulin, but still some from eating protein and the least amount, but still some from eating fats. Okay. So we can adjust how much insulin we're producing based on which macronutrients we're consuming. Um, but eating before bed is going to cause insulin secretion and whatever varied amount, depending on what we're eating. Um, and that's the worst time to do it because we're about to have our greatest burst of growth hormone a little bit before midnight. And if we have too much insulin in circulation, then that's going to interfere with that. Um, exercise might be the number one thing you can do to increase your growth hormone, growth hormone production. Um, aerobic and resistance training have both been found to be effective in stimulating production um, and higher intensity leads to higher amount of secretion. Um, but anything counts, it all helps, but the higher intensity is going to cause greater production. So it's not about length of time, it's not duration, 
it's the intensity. So greater intensity for a shorter time, it's going to have more of an effect on your growth hormone. Uh, and then of course, because sleep is so important for growth hormone, we want to optimize sleep. So all of the things that we can do to make our sleep better. So avoiding blue light before bed, um, not having too much caffeine later in the day, if that interferes with your sleep, all those sorts of things. It's a topic for another video is how can we improve our sleep, but whatever you can do to improve your sleep will have an effect and improve your growth hormone secretion. All right. That's all I have for you. Thanks so much for watching.